So as someone who has been both highly positive and very critical at times of the service known as Nintendo Switch Online and the expansion pack, I personally hope I make this video and in a few days or weeks time it is completely irrelevant in terms of my concerns around the service, but in today's video we do have to have a very honest and objective conversation on where we are at right now today with the update consistency around all consoles including the NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, and N64 library of games and truly break down and discuss where we may be headed with the future of this service and look at exact dates of the last last updates to these library of systems and truly break down and discuss where we may be headed with the future of Nintendo Switch Online when it comes to new game editions going forward. What's up nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Summer Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today. Make sure you turn on your bell notification icon. So you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. As I mentioned guys, today we are discussing all things Nintendo Switch Online and specifically a deeper look at the update roadmap schedule around the entire console library that they have available today because it does seem like if you look at history with this service as a whole, Nintendo does tend to add Add in a new console and stick to a very structured new update roadmap schedule of at least one to two or even three new NES or SNES games when those two systems were the focal point per month then gradually over time that would get slightly less consistent and we would see it every other month or every three months in some cases then one point in time shifting to a point where we didn't see any new games added into the NES or SNES library for a full six months. Then you had the addition of the expansion pack back in October of 2021. And that definitely revitalized where our expectations could be set in terms of new updated games being added into the service because consistently Nintendo stuck to one new N64 game per calendar month when they started adding in additional games past the batch of original games that launched. And I believe that was either in December or January and every single month throughout that end of 2021 and even all through 2022, we got one new game per month with the exception of September. That was, of course, the big Nintendo Direct that we got the last big look at the roadmap for future games and the big acknowledgement around the service. That was actually the very first month that we saw Nintendo essentially skip adding in a new game to the expansion pack in terms of N64 titles. And there was also some wording at that direct that made me just slightly concerned that Nintendo may start veering off to more of a unpredictable update roadmap schedule with new N64 games when they outlined everything that was coming up and said we will gradually be adding in these N64 games to the service. But you can't forget that surprise, surprise, just this last month in November, we got Mario Party 1 and 2 added into the service at the same time. So you can say even if we don't get a December game whatsoever and we'll spend a little bit of time on that conversation here in a moment that yes Nintendo only skipped the month of September in 2022 and that's objectively not that bad but if you do want to have an honest conversation around how Nintendo is updating their ongoing $50 annually paid subscription plan of Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack versus how the competition is doing things with really Sony being the one that has a service more similar to NSO in some way with PlayStation Plus, just the base tier, you're going to be getting like PS4, PS5 games added in, at least three new ones every month that you can add to your library. And that's pretty much a firm commitment from Sony that that's going to be added in there. Game Pass is a different type of service and Xbox does have games with gold, but I don't think those are directly as comparable as it seems like Microsoft is in a transitional period of focusing all their efforts to a Game Pass subscription, which is definitely more money, but it also has a way larger library of brand new games and classics alike. And so while obviously Nintendo markets their Nintendo Switch online service differently than how Sony and Microsoft do, I still think that you can call into question months like this where we are left in the dark and we haven't seen updates other than the last two Super Mario Party games in November and we don't know when anything is coming next for N64. I would also like to highlight that it has been since September 15th that we got the last Sega Genesis batch of games, which were three different ones added into the 
the service, Elysia, Dragoon, Beyond Oasis, and Earthworm Jim. And then if we want to talk about the base tier service, which still has plenty of paying subscribers, $20 annually per year. The last time you got an update was in July with Kirby's Avalanche and Fighter's History and another title that's slipping my mind right now. But that's essentially almost half a year since we've seen any kind of acknowledgement, love or support for the NES and SNES and the base tier subscribers. And really now you have to realize that all you're getting for that $20 annual price point is cloud save storage online and the ability just to play online with friends. And I definitely think that Nintendo can do a much better job sticking to a more consistent update roadmap schedule with all of the consoles. Cause then even let's talk about Sega Genesis and you have definitely some great games on there today. And I do love that all of these games support things like online play. It's fantastic. There's a lot good with this service, but whenever it comes to consistency from Nintendo and really the bigger problem in my opinion lies to them not ever officially communicating and sticking to any kind of firm commitment around how many games each system will get per month or per every other month and we are just always left waiting around wondering if this is a month that we get multiple new additions for many different consoles or wondering if we're not going to be getting anything for the foreseeable future and i have a bigger issue with that when you have things like a only available annual price point for the expansion pack it is fifty dollars all at once so once you have paid that you have committed to nintendo to give them their full 12 months worth of money up front and you are just on the ride to see whether or not they actually choose to consistently add in new titles to both the Genesis and N64, or if you will be waiting around for a while and you might get a batch update one or two months where there's two N64 games here or there, that very well could happen with numbered games like maybe Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 launch in the same month, and they do kind of make up for some missed months, but the whole not knowing and being left in the dark when you've already given them your money is the bigger problem for me personally. And now, yes, will this tone slightly change if we get the big blockbuster game known as GoldenEye in December, that could definitely be a strong way to close out 2022. And while it says coming soon on the Nintendo Direct trailer in the US, it said 2023 in the Japanese trailer. And so it's either launching staggered release dates or it launches like on December 31st, like New Year's Eve to New Year's. And because of the time difference, it's 2022 here and 2023 in Japan. Like maybe that's the case. I don't know, but I do think that Nintendo should go out strong this year on an N64 game like GoldenEye and not wait until the beginning or middle of 2023 to drop this game and skip December entirely. And all the while, we have no clue on when we will be getting new Genesis games and any kind of additional support for missing classics on NES and SNES. It's at a point with those services that yes, a lot of the games that fans will want will require some licensing fees, but Nintendo can't afford that when they have amassed a giant amount of revenue from continuing to have subscribers on this service and having such large numbers. I believe we're well over the 35 plus million paid subscriber point at this point in time. If I'm remembering their last investor meeting briefing slide around that correctly, like there is a ton of money flowing into the service and Nintendo can absolutely do a better job committing to the fans around a consistency plan for their update roadmap schedule going forward. And we're not even talking about things like the missing consoles that we know are on the way. We know that the Game Boy family of systems have working emulators that have been leaked online that can be traced to nerd the European Nintendo Research and Development Branch that yes, we're going to get those, but Nintendo is going to strategically drip feed their content with this subscription service to probably last for the next two, three, four years or even if we're lucky enough one day to get GameCube and we added in, this could be three, four years out knowing Nintendo. They could really stretch this thing out and try to do one new big system per every other year, I guess, because that's kind of what we've been looking at so far. And something tells me that the soonest we should probably expect the addition of Game Boy Family of Systems to be added into the service would be the September Nintendo Direct in 2023, as that's historically always been the big event where they do any kind of 
acknowledgement to big NSO editions? Or do they get creative and start adding in a lot more free games that you can download from the eShop, free DLC packs that come with the expansion pack? I don't know, but I personally do believe that Nintendo can be doing a lot more in terms of new content for NSO paying subscribers today. But I wanna hear from you guys at this point in the video, all your personal thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about. Are you personally happy with the consistency and update roadmap schedule that Nintendo has stuck to for the service so far? And you just think they need to stay the course with more of the same? Or are you slightly concerned like me that we may be headed to a point in time where we are left waiting multiple months in between new game editions for N64 and all of the other systems? And that to you is also a big problem when you pay for 12 months all at one time, since that's the only option to buy the expansion pack. And when do you personally think Nintendo will choose to reveal and pull back the curtain on things like additional systems to the service and when is it time to do that because i definitely feel like now with getting into the later half of the n64's library that yeah sooner rather than later might be better for these big additions but regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today i do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics Go watch Saturday's video next if you haven't already, which is on screen right now. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.